Hello everyone and welcome to the STM32 microcontroller tutorials. In this STM32 microcontroller tutorial we explain how to properly set up a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter device or briefly UART device. That is, we explain how to serially send data from an STM32 microcontroller to our computer. We explain how to write a C code that will establish a communication link and that will send strings and numbers from the STM32 microcontroller to the computer and how to display the information on the computer screen. For example, the practical application of the material that you will learn in this tutorial is to print on the computer screen the sensor value processed by the microcontroller. That is, you will learn how to add to your microcontroller the functionality that is similar to Arduino's serial monitor and print line function. Over here, you can see the message that is transmitted from the microcontroller to the computer by using the UART serial communication. Here is the main code that is uploaded to the microcontroller and that generates the messages. The code implemented in microcontroller will increase the counter value and it will create a string message that is sent through the UART communication channel to the computer. On the other side, that is on the computer side, we use a program called MOBA XTERM. We use this program to read the messages from the serial port. And here are the messages that are sent to the computer and as you can see, the counter value is continuously increased. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial, as well as almost 500 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. The first step is to open the STM32 development environment. We do that by clicking on start and by searching for STM32 cube IDE. Here is the development environment. Let's open a new project. We click on file, then we click on new and over here we click on STM32 project. Next, over here you need to select your microcontroller. In my case, I'm using the so-called Nucleo 64 board. So click on board selector and find your board. Here's my board. I'll click over here. And then over here, I will find the exact number. My board is this one, F446RE. However, everything explained in this video tutorial can be generalized to other board types. Click on next and give the name to your project. I will call it UART1 demonstration and click on finish and click on yes. Since we use the default configuration options, this development environment automatically configured these two pins to use for UART communication. Let's click on this pin. You will see over here TX. TX means that this is the transmitter pin. On the other hand, if you click on this pin, you will see that this is RX pin. RX means that this is the receiver pin. In this video tutorial, since we will only send the data, from our microcontroller to our computer, we will be basically using this pin. However, in the general case, you might be using both pins. And we are not going to change these default options. You can also configure other pins to be either a transmitter or receiver pin by simply clicking on the pin and by searching for the proper option. Over here you will see this option RX. This means that you can configure this pin to be a receiver pin. Similarly, if you click over here, you will also see UART options. So you just have to click on the pin and to search 
for the proper option and to select that option. However, as I mentioned previously, we will not play and we will not configure other pins, we will use these two default pins. Next, click on the connectivity. And over here, click on this option. Now, let's expand this window and let's analyze what's written over here. Over here, you can change the communication mode. Currently, we are using the asynchronous communication mode. However, if you click over here, you can, for example, select synchronous or some other type of communication. However, let's use this default option. For the time being, don't play with this option. The next important menu is this configuration menu. Click on the parameter settings. And over here, you can adjust the baud rate, you can adjust the word length, you can adjust parity, stop bits, or you can play with advanced parameters. In this video tutorial, we will use the default settings. However, you have to remember these numbers since later on we will have to configure our mobile X term and the baud rate should match this baud rate. So keep in mind and memorize this baud rate. Another important menu is this GPIO settings. Over here, you can see that PA2 and PA3 are actually our UART pins, and you can see them over here. What is most important over here is that they are modified and they are enabled. This is very important. To summarize, we are using the default configuration that's properly configured by our development environment, and we will not play with these settings. Okay, the next step is to generate the C code corresponding to this configuration. You can do that by clicking on project and by clicking on generate code and click on yes. Then this development environment is actually smart enough to bring you to the main.c function. However, if the development environment does not automatically open the main C function, you can find the main C function by clicking on core, then click on source and double click on main. The next step is to include the necessary libraries. In this video tutorial, we will play with characters and we will play with strings. And consequently, we need to include the libraries that will enable us to manipulate with characters and strings. Now, when Typing your code, it's very important to enter the code between these comments. User code begin includes and user code end includes. So over here, I will include my libraries, these three libraries. Now, why it's important to include your code between these comments? Here is the main reason. If we now go back to this configuration window and if you change some settings. For example, we change some pin number or something like that. And if we now click on project and if we click on generate code, what will happen? You will generate the code. However, you're going to erase everything that's outside these comments. So if you type, for example, some code over here, if you regenerate the code, the code will be erased. However, the code that's within these comments will not be erased. This is very important to keep in mind. In the SQL, I will write a simple code that will send a simple hello world string to the serial port on my computer. That is, the microcontroller will send a string to the computer. So let's do that. Scroll down and find our main function. Here it is. Now, inside of these comments, let's define a character array. I will simply paste the code. Here it is. So this is my character array. And I included this end of my string such that I can properly define my strings and character arrays later. Before we actually define our message and before we send the message, it's very important to understand the function that's used to initialize our UART settings. 
Where is this function? Here is the function. Let's find the definition of this function. If you scroll down, you will see the function over here. And over here, you can see several important things. You can see this structure HUART2, and we will need to refer to this structure. And you can see the settings. You can see the baud rate, you can see the word length, you can see the stop bits, parity mode, etc. These are very important settings and they're automatically generated. So you don't need to write this function by yourself. That's the job of this development environment. At the end of the day, you just need to know the name of the structure defining the communication protocol properties. Okay, let's go back to the main function and let's type our code. Here is the main function. Scroll down until you see this while loop. Over here, I will enter my code. Here it is. This first line is used to fill this character array with my message. My message is simple, hello world. Then, I'm using this function from the HAL or HAL library to send this message. First of all, I need to specify the name of the structure defining the communication protocol. Then, over here, I need to specify the name of the message. The mes name of the message is just message, and this is the character array. Note over here that I'm using casting to cast this message to be unsigned integer 8t. Then, I need to specify the size of the message. And over here, I need to specify a communication timeout. I'm using 100, however, you can also use a larger value. And after that, after I communicate my message by using this function, I'm simply delaying my code for 500 milliseconds. And that's it. Simple as that. If you now upload the code, the microcontroller will send a hello world string to the computer. However, on the computer side, you need to have a program that will read this message and display it on the computer screen. That is, you need to have a client that will read the messages from the serial port. I'm using a very simple client called MOBAXTERM. So search for MOBAXTERM, then click on this website, click on download, I'm using a home edition. Click on download now and over here I'm using the installer edition and save it on your computer. Next, go to your download folder and extract the zip file. Next, open the folder and run this installer. Click on next, accept the license agreement Use the default setting, click on Next, and click on Install. And wait for a while for the computer to install this program. Okay, the installation was quite quick, and click on Finish. Next, let's go back to the development environment, and let's build a project. You can build a project by clicking on Project, and by clicking on Build Project. You can observe over here that there are zero errors and zero burn warnings. Perfect. Next, attach your microcontroller to the USB port and let's upload the code. We can upload the code in two ways. We can simply click on Run and we can over here click on Run As and we can click Run As Application. So let's do that. Use the default settings. and wait for a while until over here you see the message. Download verify successfully. This means that you have successfully downloaded the program to your microcontroller. Next, let's open our MobileX term. So click on start and search for MobileX term. Here is the main window. Here you have several options. The easiest way to start the terminal is click on session and over here click on serial. Now, here you need to select the proper communication port. You can see that MobileX term automatically recognizes our 
STN Microelectronics link. So click over here and here it's very important to correct to select the correct baud rate. The baud rate should exactly correspond to the baud rate you use to set up your URT communication link. In my case it was 115200 and click on OK. And here it is, voila, here it is. We can see hello world, hello world, hello world, and hello world. Good. Next, let's write a more interesting code. I will write a code that will define a counter that will increase the counter value periodically starting from zero, then one, two, three, and that will communicate a message with the value of the current counter. So let's go back to our main.c file and let's start with coding. Over here, I will define an integer counter, int counter, and I will initialize it to zero. Okay, next, over here in my main function, I will erase this code, and I will type my new code. Here it is. What's happening over here? I'm using this function sprintf to actually copy and overwrite the old messages with this message, actually with this string. Here I'm saying counter value is, and I'm using these two symbols to actually be add, to add the counter value, and that's my message. Then I'm using, again, this function to transmit the message, the reference to the communication link, link structure, message, size of message, timeout, then I'm delaying the code for 500 milliseconds and I'm incrementing the counter. Okay, so let's test this code by first building the project. And hopefully there are no errors and zero warnings. Perfect! Then let's upload the code. Another way for uploading the code is to simply click over here. Okay, then wait for a while and let's go, okay, after seeing this, let's go to our mobile X term. And here it is. You can see that we are successfully transmitting the message counter value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.